beauty lies in the simplicity of things. A lot has changed from the way my grandpa used to live. It was a hard life, but simple. His way of knowing the place in every detail. Everything had its own rhythm. Fishing, the seasons. You lived in harmony with nature. When I was a little kid, I used to go around fishing with my dad. It felt like going into a maze full of reeds, canals, ponds where folks would hunt ducks. I remember this lighthouse back when the caretaker from Kyoji and his family used to live inside. I make a decent living. I'm always doing something new. I started 21 years ago with these little boats to help folks get to know the Po River Delta. With a certain spirit. The Delta is changing. Tourism is coming, although it's not exactly the type of tourism I've always dreamed about. With a certain closeness to the land and respect for the people living here. I hope gradually, over the next few generations, we'll recuperate this dimension of culture and territory. here from the chaos of cities and settle down and I started to wonder what do all these folks find here when I started looking around a bit more and I realized there were hues of colors and aromas an atmosphere of tranquility that's hard to find seeing pictures of this place can only give you a small fraction of the idea of what it means to live here a sunset or a little boat trip or a bike ride can give you an idea of what the Po River Delta is like. A place you need to experience. Each year it offers us something new. My daughter is 11 and she comes up to me and says, Mom, smell these flowers. Or Mom, look at these colors because ever since she was little I pointed out these things to her. Another way to get to know our area is to taste the area based on what each season has to offer and the catch of the day. It may sound strange to taste the area, but that's how to get to know it. The Delta gives us tourism for a few select visitors. Not that we don't want people to come, they should. But it's not a tourist trap for the masses. It's for travelers who want to be aware of the nature of things. Simplicity is the nature of things. Where the town of Pila stands today, poor people started building huts near where they fished. But fishing was not the initial main activity. Growing rice was. Pila means separating the grains of rice from their shaft. These were rice fields. Being one of the best places around for fishing, gradually folks developed this profession. So now Pila has become one of the biggest fishing ports in the northern Adriatic. Other types of work came to the delta, and today, Dredging clams is the biggest activity here. After storms or when the river overflows, sandbars may form or may disappear overnight. What we do is not so much a tourist itinerary, but glide through canals where only fishermen and lucky hunters venture. Keep in mind that the Po River Delta is one of the few places where you can still find real fishermen, the ones who really care about their catch. Here there's nothing fake. It's all very natural, even today. The land 
Reclamation Museum in Kavendramin came to be in 1990. Before that, up until 1969, it was a pumping station, the first large one used to drain the delta. After land reclamation, these pumps became the symbol of the territory's rebirth. The population increased significantly, and the social economic level of the area took off. Everything the delta is today depends on land reclamation. Navigating here gets really interesting, since you can take a boat through any of the branches of the Po, even between the various lagoons it forms. along Via Pupilio, the road built by the Roman consul Publio Pupilio Lenate in 132 BC, a stop for merchants as they traveled north to trade. A harbor was constructed especially for trade ships to dock on their way from Mimini to Aquileia. See this canal? It used to be the only connection at the time between the Lagoon of Venice and the Duchy of Ferrara. This was the stable for the horses they used. Since there were no motors back then, boats were pulled along the canals by horses from the Adige River to the Po. Tracing an itinerary from Punta Stova and Grado to the Po, Mantua and Ferrara, you experience a wide range of environments and chances for discovery. Traveling on inland canals and passing through locks, many of which open automatically. Slowly navigating the rivers and canals of our area gives you a chance to experience a very positive vacation. Folks like this type of holiday, living close to nature and in contact with local people having a relaxed lifestyle. Fort San Felice, along with Fort Sant'Andrea, were the two bulwarks in defending Venice from its enemies, and it can be surrounded on the harbor side. There is an old song from the end of the 1500s that speaks about the seven jewels of Chioggia. The first jewel is this castle, where there used to be the lighthouse. because there was so much poverty here on the island of Pelestrina. The men went out fishing, while the women would try to make a few inches of lace so they could put some soup on the table. Everyone on this project, the Pelestrina skyline, each of the people from the island wants to be able to say, I did a little bit of this, maybe just two or three inches. But it's a great satisfaction for these girls and ladies who know how to do this work. We've got everything in Palestrina. Good people, good fish, the town, peacefulness. The best place in the world here. We still don't bother to lock our doors. We don't worry about burglars. A beautiful island. 
We've got the sea, the sun. You can relax. This pearl of Pelestrina is a unique place in the Venice Lagoon because on the island we still live as we did a generation ago. The traditional way with the local customs maintaining our important sacred rites. We have a location as you can see in the camera that tells you what it means to live completely free, taking in nature. Our island is seven miles long and only 100 yards wide on it. We have five miles of accessible beaches. We have an uncontaminated environment, the oasis of Karoman, a bike path along the lagoon the whole length of the island. Anyone visiting the island will find a unique reality where life is simple, with a spirit of openness. And these traditions should be maintained over time. We need to teach young people what life is really about, not something false. Taking it easy, living the nature of the island. So our young people in the future will find a happy island, where people are happy because the environment, the sea and lagoon with all their natural beauty are felt by people living here on the island of Palestrina, between two pearls. Venice and Kyoto. I am in the arsenal of Venice, where great fleets destined for the Orient were built. The Lagoon of Venice is the city's lifeblood. Laguna Longa tells the story of how it is still possible to experience this unique reality by navigating its protected waters. We will listen to some of its extraordinary inhabitants who will tell us what it means to live and work on these islands. island of Certosa, meaning monastery, near where the lagoon opens into the sea, was once a seashore before Lido formed. The island has two sides to its beauty. 
One historical, with the many different ways people used the Certosa over the centuries before abandoning it, and then the new part of the island built using sediment dredged out of the waterways. Where nature took over since human activity was limited to military exercises, vegetation has grown spontaneously into its original wild habitat. Young as it may be, it presents features inexistent elsewhere. The dimensions of some trees for example, are huge, thanks to the lagoon's microclimate. The Certosa has a significant archaeological area where the convents of the Middle Ages are still buried and cannot be seen. But there are large mounds that are clearly visible that remind us of when the island was used as an ammunition factory. These earthen outcroppings were built to separate buildings from each other, so that in case of explosion, one building's explosion would not propagate to the next. So there are physical elements here that would be inexplicable were we not to know the island's history. These sandbanks, called Bahrain would actually be the lagoon floor during the greatest high tides. They are the point of contact, the border, between two worlds, water and sky. They are populated by a particular type of alephine flora, that is, plants that thrive in salt water. Walking on the sandbanks, you get a real feel for what it means to be in the lagoon. You feel it on your skin, in the air, the wind, the sea. The shapes of the sandbanks are curvy, even sensual, as defined by X-rated Venetian filmmaker Tito Brass. Not only the emerging landforms, but also the shallow waterways meandering through them. The island of Sant'Erasmo is as large as the city of Venice, 360 hectares. Once it was entirely cultivated, vegetables went straight from the fields here to the ancient Venetians' tables and beyond. It's peaceful here, the charm of living surrounded by the beauty of the lagoon of Venice. It doesn't take long to get to Venice, Murano, Burano, and other islands. When I was a kid, no one wanted to admit they were from Sant'Erasmo. They just said they were Venetian. But today, things are different. We're proud to say we live and work in Sant'Erasmo to make this island grow by promoting and offering our produce. Sant'Erasmo was once like a painting full of colors. You would see all the vegetable gardens with clear contrasts in hue, depending on what they were growing. You can smell them growing in the air. Tomatoes, squash, fruit trees. Each leaf has its own fragrance in the air, all mixed with the saltiness of the island's soil, with the lagoon on one side and the sea on the other. When there's a breeze from the south, as there is now, the Scirocco, it blows salt particles through the air, which land on the gardens. That's why our produce is so tasty, they absorb a bit of salt. Silence here reigns supreme. For 53 years, I've been living at number 103. That's it. I've never gone off the island. I love it here. I had a husband who was a fisherman who never set foot on land. He was happy that way. Well, as when my three children grew up, they all left me. They all went to live elsewhere. In a couple of decades, unless something changes, there won't be anybody making lace anymore. There are just a few of us left, and at our age, well, there aren't many young people who know how to do this work. Burano is really beautiful. There are several nice lace shops, and if you want to see ladies at work, there's the Lace Museum. And there are these shops where you can learn how to make lace. We teach you how to carry on the tradition. The sea layer 
river derives from a spring and flows 60 miles. It's lovely, I would say, a hypnotic river, fabulous, with lots of stories to tell. A relaxing river. Indeed, its name probably derives from silente, that is, be calm, not so much for its slowly flowing waters, as for the sense of calm it bestows upon you. It's a river that inspires you. There are lots of the type of hunters I like, the ones shooting pictures. They come here to paint, too, and capture its several moons. And it's fun to go boating on the Sile, and to go cycling on the Sile's greenway, and to take long walks along its riverbanks. traveling along the original riverbed of the old Piave River, where the Sile's waters were deviated. If you go out rowing here, it's easy to encounter wildlife. Besides swans, we have cranes and coots, mallard ducks and egrets. It's something you need to experience, especially at dawn, rowing when the first light of day touches your face a unique sensation. You're tired, you've given your muscles a workout, as well as your nautical skills, and then you have to turn around, and you're blessed by the rising sun. It's really great. I've even shown the water to the people living here who had never seen Yezo from the water, from another perspective. They'd seen it from the riverbank, but not the water. This love for the water is in our DNA. There has been a generation gap in interest for the past 50 years. But if we look at historical photos, we see river crossings by boat or water bus. Yezlo grew up around its river as a crossing. Amongst the many unique aspects of this territory, recently incorporated as a town just 15 years ago, Cavallino Tre Porti has several firsts regarding tourism. It's the top beach in Italy for number of visits, more than 6 million last season. And another with its fortifications, which can be seen today. They were built for the new Kingdom of Italy in the 1800s a defensive system on the Lagoon of Venice for the Italian army called Fort Treporti. In spite of our beaches, we need to conceive of a type of tourism distributed throughout the year regarding history and culture, and interest for this is growing. done throughout history. They've manipulated nature for desired results, but not mechanically. This is great, because it meant knowing ahead of time what the effects would be. They took their time, for example, to deviate a major canal or river. But their hydrologic objective was slow, long term. The first thing that comes to mind when you navigate along this river is the beauty of silence and the beauty of its changing colors, especially when you're boating on the Sile in early autumn and the leaves turn to gold. Anyone with the slightest propensity for painting will want to get out a canvas and paint a picture. Everybody abandoned Cowardly on September 8, 1943, when the armistice with the Allies was signed on little boats like this. The only people left were the Justice of the Peace, the Mayor, and one other person.
and my godmother came from town by bicycle. Born here, a fisherman still today. Lots of fresh air. I caught river bass, sea bass, 20 pound bottom fish, huge fish, all illegally. The charm of these places lies also in the peacefulness they bestow upon you. You are breathing in the air that's jostling the reeds. You're gliding along the water, being able to imagine what's beyond the tangled briars and locust trees. You hear a mullet jumping out of the water, or seagulls and other birds calling to each other. There is this dimension of nature that is absolutely precious. Embedded in the environment are references to history, culture and folklore. For example, this broad canal gets its water from the Lemene River, a waterway where history has flowed for centuries throughout the eastern part of the province of Venice. If we sail upstream along the Lemene, we pass through San Gaetano and Concordia Sagittaria, the ancient Roman town of Giulia Concordia. Caorle was its maritime port. Then Portuguara, founded in medieval times, around the year 1000 as a river port. You're exploring history when you navigate on these waters. Ernest Hemingway remembers the lagoon around Cowardly and Bibione in his novel Across the River and Into the Trees, where he describes the frozen lagoon at dawn. In filmmaker Piero Paolo Pasolini took a trip by bicycle from his hometown of Casarsa down to Cowardly with his friends. And then there's writer Ippolito Nievo's Confessions of an Italian, where there's a description of the lagoon of Cowardly and its damp air, and how the main character, Carlino, discovers the sea a piece of sky fallen to earth. That was in 1858. It's nice to navigate here while reading literature that immerses you in the landscape you're floating through. The term valle is often misinterpreted. Not many know that it derives from valum, in Latin, meaning a defensive embankment. The island behind us, called the Valle Vecchia, was a large fishing preserve until the early 1960s, when this area was dried of its marshland. Since then, Valle Vecchia has been an island of reclaimed land, 800 hectares of countryside on the seafront, and three miles of unspoiled beaches. Behind the beaches, 170 hectares of pine groves, and the rest consists of intensive one-crop farms. The last shoreline environment in Veneto without any sort of beach resort. So it has inevitably become a point of reference for all those who would like to discover the soul of this shoreline. And behind us, a landscape where in the winter you can see the snow-capped peaks of the pre-Alps in Carnia and Giulia. Fantastic scenery on the horizon. A little heaven on earth, where man lives. We know how important this place is. The town of Caorle is separated from Valle Vecchia by the harbor mouth, that is, a wide expanse of water open to the sea called Port Falconera. Here are the picturesque huts made of lagoon reeds known as Casoni, a symbolic image of Caorle, stone age dwellings that have not really changed in architectural structure over the past 10,000 years and up until the 1960s. Local fishermen lived in these casoni. Why Port Falconera? Well, migrating birds were followed by their predators. So falcons were captured, trained, and then sold to noblemen in the area, so they could hunt using these falcons. 
Then there is the Kanadare Canal, whose name comes from the marsh reeds that line practically all the canals here. And the reeds host their particular fauna, which define the music of these places. These landscapes heighten all of our senses, our sense of smell, for example, the sweet smell of salt, our hearing too. We hear the crane calling in the reeds, and visual. We associate the sight of broad expanses of water with flocks of swans flying overhead. A great show that starts here. Here the canal wraps around and hugs Valle Vecchia on the east and cuts across the Lovi Canal, whose name could make you conjure up wolves, since that's what Lovo means in the local dialect. But in this case, Lovo derives from alluvium, which in Latin means floods, not wolves. It's one of the largest lagoon channels collecting water inland and sending it towards the other harbor mouth, Port Baselege, which separates Valle Vecchia from the beach town of Bibione. Why Baselege? Because there were little shrines, known locally as Baselege, and so it became Port of the Shrines, or Baselege. Its broad expanses of water are important to wildlife on a continental level since the largest migration routes joining Central Europe to northern Adriatic shores pass through Port Baselege. During the winter here, there are flocks of tens of thousands of birds, something you would only see in a national park. So beauty also comes from the vitality these places express. While these places in the middle of the summer may seem a bit static and sleepy, in the off-season they're even more beautiful, thanks to their extraordinary vitality. <laughs>